Our plan is to retire in two years, even with inflation on the rise. We're planning to retire in 2024 through the use of dividend paying stocks, ETFs, and real estate. So stick around, we'll let you know what inflation means for us and how we're going to combat it to fire in 2024. And as we just start this video, we are not economists, we are not financial planners, we are not financial advisors. If this is the kind of information that we're looking for, it's not with us. Go to another channel. <laughs> yeah, all that we can do is to share our vision as a couple living in Toronto, which goal is to retire early in 2024. By the way, my name is Jean. I'm Christine. And as you know, fire we go in 2024. This video is going to be divided in three parts. Part one is more on the definition of inflation and what it really means. Part number two, what is happening now or what is going to happen in the future? And part number three, we are going to share with you what is our plan to keep investing as we go in 2022 with the intent of retire early in 2024. Just before we start, how do we invest our money? We consider ourselves hybrid investors, meaning that we do invest on dividend pay stocks. We also invest on ETFs and on real estate. So what is inflation? It's been everywhere in the news. It's been talked about for a few weeks now, rising inflation. But what exactly is it? Well, if we look at Wikipedia, their definition is that in economics, inflation refers to a general progressive increase in the price of goods and services in an economy. When the general price level rises, each unit of currency buys fewer goods and services. Consequently, inflation corresponds to a reduction in the purchasing power of money. Let's translate that. <laughs> Boiled down, when you go to the grocery store, that $100 you were spending on groceries before, it's gonna cost you about 110 to buy the exact same set of groceries. Just the general cost of eggs and bread, gas, stuff like this, it's just gonna go up. And you might think, is inflation good or bad? Personal finance is personal. <laughs> <laughs> you might not like what I'm gonna say, but inflation is good as long as the economy is under control and growing. So that's why inflation we do consider as a good thing. Mm -hmm. If you have deflation though, that's not the case, but it's not the topic for now. <laughs> yeah. So let's only focus on inflation. Yeah. And slow inflation, not crazy out, no, out of control no. inflation. A little bit of inflation yeah. is good, which Jayon's gonna talk about here in a second. Yeah. <laughs> What is happening now and what is going to happen in the future? Well, the future we don't know, but all that I can share with you is back in the 90s and I was looking at the graphic, look at the inflation that we had in Brazil. It was out of control with more than 1000% per year. Here in Canada, here in North America, we are very fortunate because we have never seen, you know, that discrepancy in inflation comparing on this case Brazil with Canada or even the US and so many countries in Europe. But what is good is inflation is still under control and we have been living with it for quite some time. It's not something new. So what does inflation mean to us today? We get that everything's going to cost a bit more, but in terms of our finances, what does that mean? So let's say that you have a savings account for your emergency fund that's sitting in a, an account that's generating one and a half, two percent interest a year. Currently, inflation is sitting around 4.5%, 4.6%. So you're actually losing money. When you have cash just sitting in that account, you're actually losing money in a higher inflation environment. And that's why right now we're 100% invested into equities. So what about your mortgages? Well, you could actually see an increase in your mortgage rates as well. That's due to the fact that generally when inflation is on the rise or a bit higher, banks and financial institutions tend to raise their prime lending rate. Mm -hmm. A lot of our mortgages are tied to that prime lending rate. So unless you have a locked in fixed rate, if you have a variable rate mortgage, you're also gonna most likely you start might. to see yeah. an increase in your mortgages as well. Another question that you might have is, well, I do have real estate. What should I do with real estate? Should I sell? Should I buy? We personally think that keeping real estate, it's a sure good investment because it's been a hedge against the inflation. As you know, we do have two properties, this one here in Canada and another one, which is a condo that we have back in Brazil. And at this point, we don't have any plans at all in selling both mm -hmm. of them. 
Yeah, real estate seems to be one of your better investments in order to combat inflation and just keep pace with it. Yeah. So our goal is to retire in 2024, like we talk about in every video. Now, that being said, when we ran our numbers last year, our financial planner that did it for us used the uh, inflation rate of 2.5%. Currently, I think Canada's inflation is right around 4.6%. Now, whether that drops a little bit or it goes up a little bit, we're wondering what should we do? I think we're going to rerun our numbers at a yeah. higher inflation rate, maybe not as high as 4.6%, because I don't believe that's going to last for an extended period of time. However, probably higher than 2.5%. But what do you guys think? Should we have the numbers run at a higher uh, inflation rate? Yeah. Share in the comments below. If you have made up to this point, thank you very much. If you can ask for a favor, share and like this video because you're gonna help other people in the same situation as us. So we know inflation is a thing, but what can we do to ensure that we're still gonna be able to achieve fire in 2024? We need to keep enjoying this journey no matter what. So we have to concentrate on the things that we can control and not worry so much about what's out of our control. So what is in our control? What are we investing in? We're going to continue investing into those blue chip solid companies that we know are going to provide us dividends continuously. So we're investing in Canada in the financial industries, the energy industries, and the utility sector. In the States, it's broad market ETFs that cover the entire S&P 500, as well as the NASDAQ. As we did mention before, real estate. We are already invested in real estate in our home here in Toronto and also in Brazil. We are not planning to buy any more real estate. We don't have <laughs> money for that, but we are not selling ours. Why? Because this is still a passive income. We are using the equity of our home to invest in the stock market right now. If you have not heard about the Smith Maneuver, this is something that we have been doing. There is a playlist that you can go and take a look and see how we are investing. Going back to real estate, monthly and passive income, so we don't have to do anything. It remains the same. Yeah, and we continue to live below our means. We're not spending everything we make we're making sure we're tracking our money. We're not overspending on different categories. Uh, Jean has a barbecue example he likes to share with people. <laughs> it's gonna be a spoiler alert. Stop now, because you are gonna be amazed by this beautiful picture. I'm closing my eyes now, and as I close my eyes, you can see on your screen, Barbecue. <laughs> Brazilians love barbecue, especially picanha. Look at picanha. Look how beautiful it is and tasty. However, with inflation, the price of picanha might go up. If that's the case, we have to buy ribs or we have to buy chicken and sausage. That's, or sausage. <laughs> you have to do the same. So we are still living below our means and living and adapting ourselves to this new reality. So that's what we need to do as well. Yeah, just keeping track of everything, our net worth, our expenses, to make sure we're staying on track is the biggest part to yeah. combat inflation just in our daily lives. So another way that you can combat inflation is just to invest into yourself. So go and have those conversations with your boss. Depending on where you work, quite often many companies will issue a cost of living increase. Generally, that's geared at the rate of inflation. So if inflation's a little bit more this year, maybe go and speak to your boss and just see if it's possible to get a little bit more on your cost of living increase for the year. And I'm gonna use myself as an example. As you can see from my accent, I was not born in Canada. When I immigrated in 2003, I knew that I have to improve my communication skills. And I'm still improving now as <laughs> we have this conversation and I keep improving myself. And what did I do? I found out about Toastmasters and I registered myself on Toastmasters just to improve my communication skills. It's much better than when I came. I mean, it's gotta be it's 19 years <laughs> now, right? But as you can see, having a better communication skill on that example uh, allowed me to do so many things. And as of today, I even have my business, my consultant company, and it works. <laughs> You can also invest in yourself, take advantage of the library membership. 
using here Toronto as an example, we do have access to LinkedIn Learning, which is to be lynda.com. Not only the library, but YouTube. I hope, or we hope, that <laughs> this video that we are creating now is also helping you in looking for new opportunities. And lastly, make more money. By that, I mean side hustles. So look around, think of things that you could do to make a bit of extra money on the side, things you can sell that you're no longer using on Facebook Marketplace, something like that, to generate a little bit of extra income. There's any number of ways out there right now to be able to earn a little bit of extra money on the side to keep pace with inflation and keep allowing you to invest. Another thing that I can control is being smart about the commission fees. I was <laughs> looking at our numbers from 2021. And by the way, if you have not seen how much we have made in dividends in 2021, take a look on this video where we, I guess it was around 16,000 that we made on dividends. Great number. But when we start looking and tracking, you can see that I was blown away. <laughs> We spent more than $1,000 in commission fees. Yes, $1,000 in commission fees. This is something that is in our control. We can also reduce that number. As a result, one of the goals for this year is reduce the number of trades that we are going to have. And if I find opportunities where I don't have to pay any fees at all, I am doing, I mean, we are doing. <laughs> and a good example is Wealth Simple Trade. We opened recently a TFSA account with Wealth Simple Trade. I have been trading on Wealth Simple, and the beauty of Wealth Simple Trade is you don't have any commission fees at all. Why do I need to pay $4.95 using, for example, Quest Trade to buy stocks if I can use Wealth Simple Trade and don't pay any fees mm -hmm. at all? So those items are on your control and you can implement it right away. Mm -hmm. All that we have to do is a little bit of push. And if you need help, if you need support, we can count on us and you can say, please tell me about <laughs> No, I don't think that you need that you are smarter than us. But some of the things that we can control, uh, we are doing right now. Mm -hmm. Inflation is not a bad thing. It is something that we definitely need to take into account when we're looking at our financial independence journey. But it's not something that we need to fear. Look at it, recognize it, work your way around it and move on. That's what we're doing. Yes. We are always smart. All that you have to do is look for opportunities. Hopefully with this video, we were able to provide an overview of what inflation is. And as I said before, it's good. As long as we mm. are growing, it's, it's still under control. Yeah. No matter what, we have to find ways to save more money, to invest money, and to subscribe to our channel. <laughs> I don't think that was good enough. But she was not good. expecting. Being able to share our journey to financial independence is going to help more people who might not want to retire early as we are, but as long as they are able to save money, that's what it really matters. So today we just wanted to take a quick minute to say thank you to Bob Bob. <laughs> Hi, <that>. Bob. <laughs> Uh, your comments are always great and they actually really get us thinking a lot about some of the things that we're doing. So thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated and uh, we'll see you soon. And we're looking forward to seeing you on our next video. Until there. Take care. Bye. But what does this mean for all of us? Like people that might not know. Okay. <laughs> So that's why at this particular point in time, we are 100% invested in equity paying stocks. No. No. Just no. Equity. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Last one. What do you want me to do? I don't know. Are you going to say one more time? Or you no? want me to say it one more time or just this part? That's why we're invested. Say the second, this part again. <coughs> well, how did I start it? I don't know. Let's just pretend that we finished the first point and we do the second point.